this is very simple program if you just notice a pattern over here then this pattern we have already completed so at the end of this pattern we are just adding one after it on each row but notice that on the single row no part of first section is there so we need to make a provision that a uh, printing of this section will somehow start from the second iteration not on the first iteration so in the program we are asking user to enter number then i'm writing my normal group usually in the previous programs we have written for loop starting from 1 till n that is if user enters 5 so loop will be from 1 till 5 but here i have added 0 as well so loops will be from 0 till 5 and somehow this first iteration we can skip so that nothing gets printed on the first line so inside of loop we have another loop i am initializing j with 1 and the condition is j less than or equal to i so in this case i is 0 so this condition will be false hence this loop will not be executed and on the next line i am writing 1 slash n so because in the first iteration cursor will be over here it will print one over here and then cursor will move on to the next line then after end of the statement value of i will be incremented to one then this for loop will be executed one time it will print one over here and then it will come out of loop and again because of one slash in one will be printed over here and cursor will move on to next line so the same process will be completed till the fifth iteration so output will be like this and in the fourth iteration it will be 1, 2, 3 and 1. Then in the fifth iteration, output will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1. And after that, program will get completed. So far, we have seen many programs on pattern programming, but we have taken so many examples based on pattern. Goal was to make your understanding very clear on for loops. I'm sure you must have tried all these programs by yourself. In case you have not tried those, ensure that you work on those programs before you move on further. Because in next lectures, we are going to dwell into more interesting programs which will use combinations of decision control structure that is if else, for loops and all arithmetic operators. So see you in the next lecture.